Great, and we're live and we're back with Antoine. Can I say your last name? Scalia. Yep. When, when Antoine and I first met each other, I, I had to, of course, talk about Antonin Scalia, who is a very notorious Supreme Court justice in the United States. Um, but I think I'm more privileged to be talking to you, Antoine, about Cryptio. So this is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, for everyone to learn a little bit more about you. Although I am uh, a partner at Outlier um, and we're proud supporters of yours, I will try to ask some general <clears throat> questions, but also a few nudges uh, uh, to, 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 to poke around your business model a little bit and your, and your solutions that you're providing. But the floor is yours if you'd like to start with your pitch. Yeah, sure. Let's let's do it. Um, I'm sharing some slides. Yeah, can you can you see it? I can. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, let's have a quick word about uh, crypto. So crypto is a is a professional bookkeeping system for uh, digital assets. Um, basically, COVID nineteen is accelerating digital asset business adoption. We we said that during the panel. Um, so no really need to come back to it, but just a few things, uh, a few key metrics, uh, the on-chain stablecoin volumes has more than tripled uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, we've seen great achievements um, in terms of crypto as a mean of payment, uh, including Coinbase Commerce and announced as processed more than $200 million uh, worth of transactions, uh, volumes in DeFi that is skyrocketing and all these things around uh, central banks that we have um, discussed before. Um, and as a result, uh, the crypto management market is expecting to boom in the next five years, reaching 1.1 billion in, in, in 2025. But it's still <clears throat> very early, and that's also like, um, what reflects the reflection that we had just before. It's an early market, and a lot of things needs to be done. Um, and when it, for instance, when it comes to accounting and, and compliance process, for digital asset, we, we realize that it's still a very costly and very inefficient process. Uh, the reasons are both technical and and uh, and regulatory. Uh, regulatory, we, we had a word on this during the panel, but basically accounting and tax frameworks are very unclear um, and a lot of clarifications are needed. Um, and on a technical part, uh, basically the main reason is Accounting systems, all these accounting systems that all accounting firms in the world are using, uh, like things like Zero, QuickBooks, SAP, NetSuite, these things, these systems are not made to process crypto transaction or digital asset transactions. Mm -hmm. And for these reasons, uh, like a company that is holding crypto assets, digital assets, on average, it will pay the, the accounting and compliance bill will be four times bigger than a regular business at the same stage with same level of revenue. So of course it's a major problem. It's a major problem for adoption because why would you accept uh, why would you accept to use this type of technology if if your accounting and compliance bill increased by four? Um, so but that's basically what we're working on. That's basically our mission. Uh, we want to boost business adoption by making accounting for digital assets business as usual, exactly the same way as it is for traditional banking transactions, for instance. Um, so what we do is we automating uh, businesses, digital asset accounting processes. Um, so from data collection on all the sources that businesses are using, so chains, wallets, exchanges, custody solutions, and we do all the data processing to and then export data to uh, accounting to the accounting system that the uh, the company is using or the accounting firm is using. So stuff like Zero. SAP QuickBooks. Um, so basically what we're doing is we, we're building this bridge and automation between legacy traditional accounting systems and, and blockchains. And um, in that perspective, we are quite proud to, we have integrated successfully uh, Zero like two weeks ago and, and now allowing now 2 million users on Zero to basically account seamlessly for the, the crypto transaction. So now I'm not saying that these 2 million businesses hold crypto, but if they were, they won't have any problem about accounting for these assets. Mm -hmm. um, so just in terms, of, yeah, in terms of businesses and metrics, so uh, working with top companies in the space, uh, companies like <clears throat> Celo, Consensus, Ocean Protocol, Aver, Cardano Foundation, all these guys, uh, they're they, they, they doing automating the accounting processes on our um, on our system. 
and uh, we're seeing we've been we're, we're seeing a significant increase in the amounts of amounts growth since we we've built this this integration with traditional accounting systems. Um, and something that's quite also important in what we're doing is it's not only about like uh, uh, software development. It's not only about developing the software. It's and it's also related to the discussions we had before. It's about also like gathering all the knowledge, all the intelligence around accounting and and compliance issues uh, for digital assets. So we we try to gather through accounting firm partnership program and with all the CFOs that we're working with. We try to gather and create kind of a community um, that 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 connects between each other, share best practices, and then connect to associations like accounting blockchain coalitions or, or directly with, with regulators. So we want really to be this hub for accounting and compliance intelligence. Um, a quick, very quick word on, on, on competition. So we have this unique positioning of being a data provider for accounting systems. So you, you use our system to push data to your accounting system. That's the only reason why you would use our system. And so that way the ability to address traditional business adoption is, is, is higher than than our competitors because we're really focused on these systems that that traditional when i say traditional businesses it means like non-crypto companies um are are using um because this is this is what it is about this is like the mission this is why we, we we're building this company we're building this company because we we believe that more and more businesses will hold these assets um and and we believe also that we are kind of the key uh, phase right now uh, where crypto or digital assets are slowly moving from pure crypto businesses to traditional businesses with like new um, uh, uh, ideas and concepts and and uh, and um, and pilots around CBDCs, real world asset tokenization, or the rise in private stablecoin. So we believe that it's time to build this accounting foundation. And uh, maybe last quick word. Uh, so I think we are in good hands. So as you said, we're backed by Outlier Ventures, also by Consensus um, in the US. And yeah, basically we have a team of your very young, but uh, international distributed team has five years experience in the crypto industry. And yeah, we are all in this mission to basically build this accounting foundation for, for, the, for the rise of a new on-chain world. And uh, that's, that's our mission. And, that's the reason why we, we wake up in the morning. Right. That's terrific. Thank you for that. Um, if you can stop your presentation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your beautiful face. Yeah. Um, it's, it's great that you mentioned that four times cost, uh, um, which I can verify. I was actually on a panel yesterday uh, with Tim Draper. I think for those who know him, he has said on his own that his accounting bill is four times greater uh, these days since he's been uh, involved in crypto than it used to be. So definitely your solution is of utmost importance. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about um, the the companies that you're working with? Are you working with any governments as well um, in their solutions? And uh, how are you helping? How, how can you realistically say that you're going to be able to drive down those costs um, from four times to what it is or to, to what you're supporting? Yeah, the, that's that's a good one. So I think the um, so really the when we when if you look at these what are these costs why is it like four times uh higher basically one of the main so there is there are two main reasons uh uh one reason is really about um regulation it's unclear so you need to uh you need to go to like accounting firms audit firms big four and have kind of advisory around what is the right treatment that i should use given that i have different choices um, in that perspective, we we do not have the potential to say that we can solve this problem. We are not regulators. We are not advisory firms. Um, so so we do not solve these problems. Or well, at least the way we want to solve this is by creating this hub or someone that has specific questions around these treatment um, can find someone that can help uh, the company. But the the where we at, where we uh, do we play a role and in in reducing this bill is really on automating most of the work that is done right now. Mm -hmm. um the you have to see the difference that you have between a traditional business uh even in like a big a big enterprise that have multiple accounts and multiple currencies uh with uh, very complex uh treasury management of complex bookkeeping challenges all these complex bookkeeping challenges of tracking all these transactions of doing multi-currency accounting all this is already handled by by, by by accounting systems, ERP systems, everything is kind of automated. You can pull all these data from all these bank accounts automatically. Uh, you have all these multi-currency modules that are already built inside the inside the um, 
the, these products. So it's 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 Sandy, and, and all these processes automated. But mm -hmm. when you ha when you are in the same situation, and and you are in, uh, you have digital assets, and not just like a USD bank account. Uh, all these automation with the accounting system doesn't doesn't exist. So you have to do everything uh, manually. So you have to extract mm -hmm. the transactions from all the different chains, all the different exchanges, uh, all the different custody solutions or whatever. Extract these transactions. Find a way to 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 report like find, have a kind of single format because of course like a Bitcoin all chain Bitcoin transaction will look different than a, a Bitcoin deposit on an exchange will look different from a, I don't know a smart contract call on Ethereum. So you first need to have a way like a, 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 yeah, a way to read this transaction with the same format. And then you need to do a bunch of very tricky things uh, that takes a lot of time if done manually. So uh, valuation, valuation is, is tricky and would be more and more uh, uh, tricky in the future. Cost basis, gains and losses, uh, transaction identification. Okay, I have all these, I have these hundreds and hundreds of on-chain transaction, but some of them should be accounted as, I don't know, payment of salaries. Others should be accounted as, uh, uh, I don't know, interest I'm having on the lending protocol. This one is another thing. And you have no way since uh, blockchains and counterparty in blockchains are public addresses, so you have this level of anonymity, you have no way to to know which transaction is what. So you need to tell this also to the accounting system. So so all this work, all this manual work, which is today mostly done within like very buggy spreadsheets or at least in-house system that, that where people spend a lot of resources to maintain, we want to, we automate all this and and this at the end leads to like drastic uh decrease in the um in the accounting and compliance bill that the mm -hmm. company is using because it's and maybe the last thing it's not only for account it's not only for accounting it's the first thing first problem to readdress is for accounting is to help push data to accounting system but it's at the end we also like building sort of a database, financial database that the company can also also use for audit purposes uh, to show some data to regulators, and 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 it starts to be more and more interesting. And at the end, you can end up by really building sort of ERP for digital asset that will have an impact on everything that is linked to ERP use. Right, and I think that's a fantastic answer. So even beyond what you had in your deck on that competitive slide, right, where you said you were a data provider for accounting mm -hmm. services, you're doing more than just provision, right? You're doing the extraction, you're doing, uh, yeah. you're building, like you said, a, a database. It's it's more robust than basically just saying, oh, here's your crypto data dump, um, and that you're really providing efficiencies for your customers. I'm just curious, uh, how did you get started? Like, what is the origin story for this? What motivated you to want to do this? Yeah, I think it's it's not very uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty uh, common. Uh, I wanted to solve my own problem basically. Um, so we've been like uh, a lot of people have been uh, like a trader and a shitty trader in 2016, 2017, spending a lot of time like doing day trading and like shitty stuff like this. And um, and like everyone, I I, I had some gains uh, in 2017. And like everyone, I think I, I I should have like just stay in Bitcoin and not do anything, and I would have <laughs> make more gains. But uh, I end up in this situation where okay, I made all these gains. Um, and since I'm kind of interesting in solving problems and um, and mostly when it comes to like financial type of stuff, um, I had this just like this this discussion with uh, with a friend saying like if if I want to declare my taxes, how can I do it? And um, and that's how we we started to work on this. And very quickly we we we've seen that we do not want to work on 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 private taxes issues, but accounting is is a way bigger topic for businesses. And that's that's basically how I started. And also it fits it it fit. Uh, pretty good with uh, so I have finance accounting background um, and I worked in a VC fund for for a while doing only uh, investment in B2B businesses and so I have this kind of uh, yeah this 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 uh, interest I have for solving my home problem and this interest and and kind of knowledge I have on B2B businesses at some point you know they're kind of a revelation I said okay we're gonna do this All right Man, some of the best businesses out there have been started by entrepreneurs trying to solve their own problems. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I experience and understand the pain better than anybody else. Um, there's some questions here around, I, I, I'll categorize them as your business operations. One of them being like, how many countries are you currently in? And how did you get such great blue chip customers? What's your what's your secret? Was, was the, <laughs> the so. chat. Yeah. Um, so I think that the, uh, so in terms of countries, so it's, um, Again, we are 
we say we are accounting solution, but we are not an accounting solution. We are a bookkeeping solution and more precisely like a data provider for accounting systems. So we do we can work with 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 customers in, in a lot of different countries. Um, given that the accounting is not done on a platform, the accounting is done on the accounting system. So we just need to provide the data and um, and basically the way to provide the data, there's two differences, but it's it's kind of similar in, in most of countries. So we can work with a lot of different people. Um, and in terms of the nice question, which is more like complement than a question, uh, I would say that um, it's really that it's a, it's, a, it's a boring topic. It's a big topic and it's a boring topic. And basically where you have, um, since a very early stage, when you come to startups and crypto startups, you have mostly, you do not have finance guy within the team, or at least you have a finance guy if the, if the startup has raised some money, but the, um, at the early days of the business, uh, you do not want to deal with this uh, accounting and tax implications because you do not have the resources internally to work on this and you you prefer to build your own stuff and 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 figure this out later so if you have someone that is coming to you and say okay we really want to solve this and we are entirely focused on solving these problem and uh the product uh, in in no, no matter of if if you're in beta phase or if you have live product i think there is very likely that these guys will, will listen to you and say okay i'm interested because anyway i don't want to deal with it i don't know i don't know where to begin so please help me. And um, and I think that's a reason why we we have um, good customers is, um, is because we were able to show that we want to build this expertise or we are currently building this expertise. Um, and uh, and also we're spending a lot of time with them. So it's not about this, the thing I said, it's not about just like pushing the product and say, do your thing and, uh, and I don't want to hear from you and I go to chase another client. It's really like to try to understand, like work with someone uh, work with the CFO, try to understand all the challenges, try to understand his understanding of the thing, um, work with the accounting firm of the company and try to build something that fits. And when you, once you, you, you start to build the same kind of the same pattern or the same thing for different companies, you start to realize that you have something and you need to automate all this. And, mm -hmm. um, so the, the time that we spend with them, I think it's another reason why, um, we have good customers. Terrific. And then. As, as I guess, as a last question, um, as you're looking out into the future, what where do you see yourselves going? Where is SAP? Where is QuickBooks? Where is PwC? As you think about them and your own future trajectory, I think that the um, so I think that there is the opportunity to be to build something quite big um, because basically all these legacy systems, so it could be accounting, it could be core corporate banking, private banking. Um, all these legacy systems, they have no connections whatsoever, whatsoever with, with, with the blockchain world. And, and so you need kind of a middle layer, um, that is, that is connecting the blockchain world with all these, all these guys. Uh, so the first thing the the most easy thing to understand is work with an accounting system and be kind of the digital asset tool within the, um, the, the app store of the accounting system. And at some point the accounting system might acquire you, but I think we can, we can do bigger than that. Because the same way, like for instance, a business like Played is connecting all these fintech products with with their uh, with their clients' bank accounts by just like providing API that connects to their bank accounts. We have kind of the opportunity to build exactly the same thing, so be kind of this uh, uh, transparent uh, middle layer that no one knows, uh, but that ba basically connects uh, blockchain data to any type of legacy accounting compliance system. So I think, and if if the on-chain world is a thing one day. I think it's it, there is an opportunity to build a big, big business here. So that's where I want to be in the five five years, let's say. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that future for you. Right. Um, thank you so much for those in the audience. Uh, we'll put it again in chat. Please check out Cryptio. I think anyone involved in this space understands the critical importance of what Antoine and his company are doing here. So feel free to reach out to him directly. I'm sure if you have any follow-up questions. And thank you so much. Mm -hmm.